Hi, my name is Todd Lamley and welcome to Module 2, Introduction to TCPIP. This is the second module out of 14 in the CCNA series. So hopefully you've watched Module 1, although that's not a prerequisite for this module. Each module is going to be independent or its own autonomous system. Let's take a look at Introduction to TCPIP while we're going to look at the different models, the DOD model compared to the OSI model as well as the different protocols at each module and specifically we'll spend a lot of time on TCP and the protocol IP at the network layer as well as well as we should. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now TCP or TCP IP, it's really called the IP protocol suite, was created to allow us to have a logical network over a physical packet switching network. This means that the transmitting host can send out hundreds, thousands, or millions of packets, and all these packets can take various paths to get to the same destination. That's why we're using a packet switching network and why it's called a virtual circuit. So it's kind of nice in the sense that if something goes down, our network won't go completely down, or our transmission, we won't lose our transmission when we're sending something across the internet because we have many paths to send our packets. So let's take a look here. We have the DOD model, the Department of Defense model, which was created before the OSI model, by the way. And so then we have our seven layers of the OSI model, which we already know. Let's go through the four layers of the DOD model. On the top here, we have the process application layer, which actually covers the first top three layers of the OSI model. Uh, so this is actually layers five, six, and seven of the OSI model. And remember, as I mentioned in module one, that the top layers actually look a lot alike to us at the transport layer and a lot of times they're covered in one protocol for example NetBIOS. So having the process application layer consume all of the, the specifications from the session layer presentation application makes sense. They just broke it down in the OSI layer or the OSI model for application developers for ease of, of their use. It's certainly not any, anything that has to do with us or anything easier. The transport layer also was called the host to host layer, which makes a lot of sense. We're taking a data stream from one host and breaking that up into segments, into packets, into frames, right, into bits, right, our, our protocol data units, and moving those to another host through a packet switching network or just through an internetwork. So we're taking a data stream, moving it from one host to another. So host to host makes sense. Now we also use what's called port addressing here. So we're going to talk about ports in this module more than we did in module one. Also now, the network layer was called the internet layer, which is where we get the, the term internet. And so this is where all our routers were connected, very few at this time, connected together and they share routing information. Remember, if they all want to share maps of the internet work, we're going to run a routing protocol. Some examples of routing protocols are RIP, EIGRP, and OSPF, and we're certainly going to cover all of those in chapter six and seven of my book. The data link and physical layer also were covered in one layer called the network access. This kind of makes sense, I guess. You have your physical layer, you have your NIC card in combination with your LAN driver, and that makes the network access layer. And they really didn't put any protocols here. They left this open for application developers to be able to use anything that they wanted, which is probably one of the reasons that the TCPIP stack, also known as the Internet Protocol stack, became the most popular. But the reason it really was the most popular with internet developers or application developers is because that if you had an application and just did hooks into TCP and which used IP, then went down into Ethernet or whatever it was using, you really didn't have to do much work compared to what you used to have to do before the internet protocol stack. So in other words, the reliability of TCP with the unreliable IP, which gives us logical addressing and routing through net an internet network, without connection-oriented services was a phenomenal way to take your application and make it work reliably through an internet network. So that's why the internet protocol stack became so popular, both because the network access wasn't defined saying you have to run it on this type of network and the reliability of TCP became really nice for application developers. That way they didn't have to put reliability in the actual application like they used to have to, which is a lot of work. So this saves application developers a lot of work and allow them to get out applications faster. Now, at the application or process application layer, so hey, notice that this looks like the seven layer stack over here compared to our four layers. Go back here for a second. Notice that. Really, you can compare them. The process application layer does really compare one to one and the host to host layer to the transport layer, internet layer, um, 
to the network layer, and I can use those terms interchangeably. If I'm talking about the network layer, I'm also talking about the internet layer. If I'm talking about the transport layer, I'm talking about the host-to-host -host layer. These terms are interchangeable, so whether we're using the OSI or the DOD, they really do match up really close. So those terms really, whether I say one or the other, doesn't make any difference, especially for the CCNA objectives. Now, at the application or process application layers, we have file transfer, for file transfer, trivial file transfer protocol. Now, remember, we talked about this in module one. This is an unreliable protocol, which allows us to do file transfers. If I'm saying it's unreliable, that means I use UDP at the transport layer. Now, FTP, or file transfer protocol, is a reliable transport service, which means I use TCP at the transport layer.